currently on our way to the Esri headquarters in order to present for our presentation, which we started last year. So it's like been a long process and essentially what we've been working on for the past five or six months. I'm trying to memorize my script. Like I have it like in my head, but I feel like I'm gonna like blink out when I'm up there. It's like so many people and they're like all so important. I hope I don't feel so up there. We've been doing this for a while, but we got this. Yeah. We actually got this. Come on. I'm really nervous. Even though you've learned all this content, the years pass by, it's like, oh, this is presenting in front of all these people. It seems kind of almost like overwhelming. T minus like eight minutes away, but I think we should be able to get it done. We need to focus on the college readiness of high schools in Boyle Heights, right? It's important for us to see maybe how schools are doing in, in green zones versus red zones. For me, geography is one of the most important social sciences there is. Without geography, we don't understand who we, who we are or where we come from. At our school in Boyle Heights, it's really been an immigrant hub for the city of LA. It's almost 100% Latino, mostly Mexican and Central American. Yeah. Any other questions for me? I don't think so. No? Okay. The science of where is what I'm teaching students. To identify a problem or issue in their community, to collect data, visualize their data through maps, and then take action. We needed two different kinds of maps to show redlining and income. So I wanted it to be more focused. I engage students in very basic lessons of how to manipulate ArcGIS. It's a platform that Esri offers. Remember, government has a lot of functions, and a lot of functions has to do with like um, managing resources and dictating where things can go and where they can't go. The service learning project, it's a graduation requirement. And the goal of the project is for you to be proud of your community, proud of your families, proud of your culture and heritage. But our students come from families that are struggling to get by. You live in a highly regulated society and maps, policies, budgets, all those things have to be coordinated, right? It's completely different, this type of work that we do. Students are active in their own learning. So as a teacher, I am there as a coach, guiding them through their research process. Step one is the students have to pick area of research. Our project evolved a lot. Our first two choices were between the homeless epidemic and the school to prison pipeline, but then we focused more on the school to prison pipeline and the zero tolerance policies, and then from that we went into juvenile detention centers. We had like a breakdown, I guess, but we kind of went into our topic and we decided that we wanted to focus on the injustices in schools. Students are researching those issues that impact them. Originally the idea was me and my group members saw that my peers tend to flock to other neighborhoods in order to buy our goods and so we wondered why our own communities don't kind of foster a good local economy. So our question for the SOP project was how feasible is a business improvement in Boyle When they're conducting the research they are seeing that the, the problem is much bigger than, than them. We all had in common a family member or someone close to us being incarcerated and we were really interested in researching that topic. So as a group, we decided to investigate the prison system, specifically how it's racist and it targets people of color. Environmental issues, they're researching injustices in the educational system. So we decided to settle on the 1968 walkouts because it happens in our community. It's focusing on education back then and how that impacts our education now. First assignment oftentimes we'll give them is when you walk home, look. Look at the neighborhoods around you. What are things that your parents struggle with? What are things that you really care about? In a five mile radius in Boyle Heights, there's like 10 payday lenders. Getting to school every day, I'll pass by like three of them. The predatory lenders are literally preying on low income people of color. It gave me a lot of intense feelings, bro. Like that's so like messed up and cruel. And then the next step is actually research design. 
what are the data pieces that will begin to answer their question. The data that you need will be here somewhere. It may not be in a form that you recognize it, right? But you need to be able to work on those skills of like, what, what conclusions can I draw from this and how, it'll, how, how will it help me to answer my question? We really challenge them with this. Where are you going to get that information? And yeah, like who are credible sources and who are going to be biased sources? I have family members who have been inside the facilities. So we got an interview from the family members and that helped us with the regulations, with how they feel. We asked students to conduct an interview with two to three experts. Right from the get-go, we started to go around Cesar Chavez. We surveyed every individual business that we can find. So we had in total around 150 data points. It really challenges them to speak to professionals, community organizers, right? And it puts them at the center of the work. After they collect the data is the mapping part. So GIS is important to my class because it helps students visualize and conceptualize abstract ideas that are otherwise really challenging. Like putting different components on one map, it can really show like the relation between things that you wouldn't like, think of connecting. Like I wouldn't have thought of connecting population to school shootings. It's making learning that much more exciting. We're adding student stories to a map. We're adding our lives to a map. Could even be emotional for, for some people when they see themselves in a map. Yeah, crimes happen, but when mapped, like, it's like a whole different interpretation. Like, you see it and you're like, wow, like, I would have never thought this and that about my community. So I, I, I thought mapping was really changed the game for us. So as you might know here in Boyle Heights, we are more likely to have powder cocaine to heroin. Pretty sure you guys have seen it all around in your neighborhood. Now it's, how do we make sense of all this? Was our hypothesis true or false? Why or why not? The students present to students and to a panel of teachers. Our research question is, to what extent has the 1968 East Los Angeles walkout impacted the current education that minority students are receiving today? One of the demands was to have their Mexican culture be taught in school. We created maps showing the learning facilities that were implemented over the span of 50 years. We added small yellow schools and those represent the schools that were added 50 years later. And we concluded that there's still there still needs to be more work done. We just want to inform the community and have them stand up for their rights. Should we give them all a round of applause? Yay! minus like eight minutes away, but I think we should be able to get done. The end of the year, the kids culminate with a trip to Esri where they present their findings to the company and then other GIS professionals. And so a lot of times they're really nervous. And they're really worried about these important speeches in front of their peers and other adults. Boyle Heights feet promote a I messed up. Personally, I feel nervous. I feel nervous and excited. I don't know. It's like I'm mixing between both of them. Kind of in like panic mode right now, so my body's numb. But like I'm getting used to the area, so then I'm like. <laughs> I feel so proud of my students. They've been working so hard for you know, almost a whole school year to get to this point where they're going to be sharing their visions. This is my favorite day of the year to have you guys here. It's really amazing. I know you guys have been working hard. We're anxious to see your projects. I hope that you enjoy the day. That's all I should say. Otherwise, I get a little too nervous. <laughs> Go, Charlie. Well, let's call up the first group, the community businesses. Outstanding. Here we go. Uh, so our, our project is here is a collaborative improvement of um, Latino entrepreneurship. So one of the reasons we even 
looked at this was because in densely populated areas like our own community within Boyle Heights, we see Latinos tend to support themselves by establishing small businesses. I remember when I was up there, it was very nerve wracking. I think I, I still messed up my line on the first quote, but it was a different experience and I definitely feel like I would do it again. So this map represents a combination of the both previous maps shown. Here, here we can see that 30% of MSDMA students live within highly toxic zones. To highlight this, we use um, the Southern Coast Air Quality Management District. Which gave us data in order to map the amount of PM2.5 and to get uh, the annual household income of 2016. And the day we presented at Esri, it was a little scary, but once we got up there and presented, it was really good because we were able to show what we did with the Esri mapping app. Nervous, nervous at first, but once you do it, it's like, you're okay. As an English teacher, you're teaching students the basics of argument. So when the students are able to collect data and visualize it, they're really empowered to advocate for changes. Therefore, as students, we are encouraged to join org clubs and organizations that focus on fighting for uh, justice in campuses. Therefore, private prisons have an incentive to keep people locked up instead of helping inmates, reducing the recidivism rate. We kind of conclude that Business Improvement District would be very good addition to our community and would boost the local economy within our community. That's it. They can show these series of maps to people in government offices. We began to use that hashtag MapTivist. This past weekend we presented here at Roosevelt High School and we were joined by many of the original East LA walkouts. Many of them, they cried. They were in tears because they were proud that we were acknowledging that if it weren't for them, we wouldn't have the education that we have today. What our team is doing is creating some sort of merchants association. We just want the community to be better and hopefully implement a business improvement district by the end of the summer. From what I learned in my SLP project, teaching people how to make financially smart decisions is really crucial for students in like becoming young adults. When I first proposed it, I told the principal, and I think it'll be really good for the seniors. It was like, this is a good idea, let's just do it. So the class is going to have volunteers coming in to talk about budgeting, taking out loans, doing credit cards and debit cards. At the end of the day, you're right, like a bunch of teenagers probably can't fix all of the world's problems, but knowing that they're all going to go and be educated and assume these positions of power where they can really advocate for their communities is a great goal. I would advocate for teachers to engage in really thoughtful and meaningful education, and that's what I think our project is about. I feel like it's a much deeper lesson than just research. It shows them, too, that there's, there's so much humanity and loving your community and loving each other in order to, to find these solutions. Yeah.